Good day. This is Mike Stenhouse with the first ever Video Bites Liberty blog brought to you by the Ocean State Current, which you can find at OceanStateCurrent.com. In our state's politically correct culture and public policy environment, Rhode Islanders are continually finding that their liberties and freedoms are under assault by the progressive left. Today we'll talk to Michael Smolanskis from Holden, Massachusetts, who is a senior at Providence College. Michael, welcome to Liberty Bites. Thanks so much. I appreciate you having me on. Now, Providence College is a Dominican Catholic college in Providence, Rhode Island. You're studying to become a teacher, correct? Yeah, that's correct. All right, and you also serve as a resident assistant uh, and an advisor in your dormitory, I think it's at St. Joseph's Hall? That's right. It's a freshman male dorm. And what are your duties as a resident advisor? Basically, there is a resource for the students, a uh, point of contact, um, you know, should they need help or something, a problem arise, um, and basically to just be, like I said, a point of contact between the students and, and the larger school. And you're kind of like an employee of the college, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. An employee of the college. Yep. Okay. So, so in your dorm, uh, you have a bulletin board and they actually encourage political debate in your dorm. Tell us about the, the policy there. Yeah, there's, there's no governing policy on what the content can or cannot be, uh, but frequently, you know, during our meetings, they'll encourage us to post uh, political content, uh, you know, about immigration or, or tax reform or anything. They Basically, if it's informational, you can put it up. All right, so you put up some information on or around March 1st of this year. Uh, uh, tell us what you put up. Uh, we'll put a picture of this up on the screen. Uh, first, just tell us what you put up and why you put it up. We'll get the reaction to it later. Sure. So um, I'm in a freshman male dorm that is actually co-sponsored by the Campus Ministry Center. Uh, and so throughout the, the year, I've posted a series of boards on different faith content. Um, you know, in the past, a pro-life board uh, or how to be a Catholic gentleman. But this month, um, I decided to, to go with something of church teaching. And so I put up a board that uh, talked about the Catholic teaching on marriage, about be being between one man and one woman. Um, and it was, it was meant to be educational in that sense, of course, for my residents, it's supposed to be informative, um, but also um, was something directed towards the administration, that there's a tremendous double standard here, uh, that these views are not welcome, uh, they're not protected in and the same. a Catholic college. Correct? Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be. <laughs> so traditional views on marriage are not welcome in a Catholic college. Now, I, I saw the picture, and our viewers have seen the picture of your bulletin board. There was nothing derogatory in there. You just put up, the, like you said, the church's teachings of, of, uh, of the traditional view of marriage. What was the reaction once people found out what you had put up on your board? Yeah, I mean, almost immediately uh, there was uh, all sorts of harassing text messages sent from my coworkers. Um, people started showing up, uh, including some of those coworkers, into my building. Are we uh, talking mostly coworkers or students here? At the beginning, it was mostly coworkers because it's my understanding that somebody who I work with must have started spreading this. Uh, and then in subsequent nights, it was larger groups of students um, congregating outside my door. The board has been has been vandalized and torn down several times. Um, I had to go sleep in a different building the first night because School public security got involved, didn't they, at some point? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, you know, I could hardly go brush my teeth without finding an angry mob in my hallway. Um, and so they were concerned for my safety and relocated. Were you me. concerned for your safety? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, when security came knocking on my door, I mean, I had the door locked from the inside. That's so at God. this point, you got to be, you're, you're, like you said, you're concerned about your safety uh, uh, to our show. Did you also feel like a little bit of your liberty had had a bite taken out of it at this point in time? Oh, of course. I mean, you know, it's hard to watch the kind of reaction from students and the administration towards my board versus uh, there's a pro uh, lesbian bulletin board up in a female residence hall for a whole month uh, with, with no mention from anybody whatsoever. All right, now we're just getting into the story, and it gets much worse. Uh, a couple of, Less than a couple of weeks later, somebody publishes a cartoon, basically, of you being sodomized, and with the quote, uh, which, I, which I think our viewers will see, saying, you know, uh, what did I tell you about putting your sign up or your bulletin board? What, tell us the circumstance. How, where was that cartoon published? 
So I wasn't in the building. I was I work at the campus bookstore. And so I received a phone call from public safety uh, telling me that my understanding is it was found in the bathroom uh, posted on the mirror. It's a common bathroom for the whole floor. You're in your building? In my building on my floor, yep. And how did that cartoon make you feel? I mean, it's a direct threat. It's a, it's a threat of, of sexual assault, of rape, um, which now this is a Title IX issue, and it's of tremendous concern. I mean, if, if anybody you know, on a college campus is threatened with rape, I mean, it ought to be taken uh, extremely seriously. That's, that's very, very, uh, very disturbing. But it seems as if it only gets taken seriously if somebody from the liberal and progressive left is threatened. Of course. I mean, especially if it had been a female, if it had been, you know, someone of a, of a minority status, uh, the reaction I'm confident would have been uh, quite different because we've seen the kinds of reactions that the administration gives here when, when it involves those groups. Now, your president, Provident, by the way, the title, the title I've called this is PC at PC. We have a political correctness here at the campus of Providence College. Um, your president is the Reverend Brian Shanley. He issued a statement recently, and part of his statement says our challenge is to create a campus climate that will enable us to explore our differences dialogically with mutual respect and clarity. Do you feel that that policy has been applied to you? What has been the response of Providence College? Well, there you know, has been no direct um, condemnation of the kinds of, of acts that have been committed towards me. And so, you know, you hear statements like that from the administration and, and you think, well, Father, if you'd like to have you know, civil discourse and dialogue, uh, it, it ought to be communicated to your students that what is going on is not that. And in fact, it won't be tolerated. Um, you know, there's an environment on campus where this is this is what happens. And, you know, for him to issue statements like that just shows how out of touch he is uh, with the kind of environment here at the school. Now, there's a national magazine, Crisis Magazine, which did a long story on this, and they basically called the president's response feckless. Do you believe the, the president was backing A, you as one of its employees, and B, traditional marriage and Catholic teaching as the school is supposed to do? Not whatsoever. Um, I mean, he did give a nod to... Um, church te teaching not being considered homophobic, because that's the claim of, of my opponents. He gave a, a slight nod to that, but almost immediately, um, you know, suggests that what I did was uncharitable and that this kind of discourse should be contained within the classroom Unch or only for the Uncharitable. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, you're not alone, at least. Faculty has pushed back a little bit. They issued a statement, many, uh, many faculty members there. Uh, part of their quote was a Catholic college in particular has a responsibility to create an environment which a teaching of the Catholic Church on marriage and sexuality can be openly presented, debated, and defended. In other words, they were defending you. I'm sure it felt good to have somebody yeah. in the administration stand with you. Of course. Uh, even the bishop now has weighed in, and I want to get your thought on that in a tweet uh, just over the weekend. Uh, he says Catholic schools are often in the news these days over campus disputes, but it seems to me that those who teach or study at a Catholic school should accept the stated identity and mission of the school. Otherwise, why are they there? Also seems to be in support of your position. Did you take the bishop's tweet that way? Yeah, I certainly did. And, and uh, my understanding is that he also retweeted uh, your publication of the professor's statement. So he also seems to be supporting them, which is which is terrific. I mean, you know, in in this age, you know, tweets are very public, and that's that's something very public. Uh, the bishop has done to support both the professors and myself. Well, that's good news. And just just so our viewers know, our Ocean State Current has has been sort of chronicling this, doing a story on you. I don't know if you're the first. Were we the first to do a story on this? Yes, you were. Yes, you were. So we're breaking some news. It's now going national. I hear you, you've got a request from National Review, possibly do a story with them. Correct. Yep. So the Ocean State Current breaks the news. Now, this is not over yet. Um, there's, there's a march. Today is Monday as we tape this. The, um, what is today? The, the 19th. Uh, on Wednesday, there is a march scheduled uh, against homophobia, against transphobia, basically against you. 
uh, march on Provi at Providence College, and, and it appears as if the administration is not doing anything to stop that march. What, what are your thoughts? Well, not only not doing anything to stop it, but active, actively encouraging it. The Vice President of Student Affairs sent out an email to student leaders uh, urging them to attend the march. Uh, so it has the complete blessing of the administration. <laughs> so a Catholic, once again, a Catholic college <laughs> encouraging people to protest against one of its own employees for furthering the teachers of the Catholic doctrine at doctrine at a Catholic college. You have been asked to join the march as a show of conciliation, will you? I feel as though I, I can't. And, you know, of course, you know, the views that I hold and represent, they're not homophobic. And, you know, I don't stand for any kind of homophobia, but the, the protest is not just against homophobia. They're saying that my bulletin board is homophobic and that what I did was an act of hate speech. So to, to march would be a contradiction for, for what I stand for, uh, and, and the two are just so intimately involved. How could I march? Well, last question. As you and I know, the progressive left has an ongoing assault against uh, religion, against uh, traditional American values their friends in the media and the government, often in many public and private institutions like you have seen, support them. Uh, are you a Catholic yourself? I am. So as a Catholic, or even just as a student at a Catholic college, you know, where is, what is the role of religion in our future, in our society, on our campuses? It used to be a cornerstone of our society. What do you see long term for where we're headed? Well, I mean, according to Father Shanley himself, this ought to be something reserved for the pulpit or the classroom. And, you know, going forward, it seems like, you know, any public uh, expressions will, they will make every effort to silence. Well, the enemies of debate from the progressive left are there. They, they profess to be the tolerant ones. Yet, as you and I know, they are wholly intolerant of any idea that is not theirs. Michael, any final thoughts for our viewing audience? Well, first of all, I'd just like to thank you guys for, for breaking the story and your, your continued coverage. And, you know, it's important that, you know, collectively that we, we continue to do these sorts of things because otherwise uh, our liberty is being taken away. Uh, and it, it takes things like this to, to show people that, that this is a real threat to, to everyday people. Well, we pray uh, for your safety. We commend you for your courage. I, I hope you won't back down, but I, but I hope uh, nothing, nothing gets inflamed of this uh, situation any further. Michael Smolanskis, thank you for being with us on Liberty Bites. This is Mike Stenhouse for the Ocean State Current. Wishing you a good day. Thanks so much.